Hello and welcome to this new series of videos where we will be showcasing everything related to MicroCloud. This video will be focusing on deploying MicroCloud. I will be using virtual machines for the purpose of this demo, but the process would look exactly the same if you were to um, use actual physical hardware. MicroCloud, when it comes to scale, can start with a single node and then it can scale to up to 50 um, cluster members. Um, for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to be deploying MicroCloud across three systems in order for it to be highly available. But the process would look very similar if you were to deploy it um, on one single um, system or on more than three systems. Uh, in order to deploy MicroCloud, you just need to have several machines um, that are running Ubuntu operating system. And then once you have that, uh, you, will, you need to start by installing the required snap packages. In order to deploy a microcloud, you would need to do sudo snap install microcloud microsef microodn and nextd. So these are the four snap packages that you need in order to deploy your microcloud. Um, and you just you can run um, this one command at once in order to install all of them. In this case, I have pre-installed them just um, to speed up the process, uh, not to spend too much time in the video just installing the snaps. They are already here, and you can see that by running snap list. And uh, here, as you can see, we have all the four required snaps ready to go. So now we can proceed with initializing microcloud. For that, we just need to do microcloud init, and it will reach out to all of these snaps, um, and it will start the services in order to proceed uh, with um, the initialization process and clustering of all of these services. Now, um, here, as you can see, it is asking me if I want to set up more than one cluster member. In my case, I do, so I will select yes. But in case you wanted to deploy microcloud on just one or two systems, then you would answer no, and then the next step would, would be um, potentially skipped. In my case, I will say yes. It will ask me um, to select an IP address that I want to use for microcloud's internal traffic, and um, it will already list the available addresses. You can select them either by pressing space on your keyboard or by uh, doing the right arrow if you want to select both. I will press space to select this one and then just press enter. Now, as you can see, it will instruct you to use the following command on your other systems that you want to join the cluster. Um, and then when requested, enter the, the passphrase below. So I will just copy the passphrase for convenience. And then I will go to my second machine and just type microcloud join and it will again uh, first start by initializing the services and I will do the same on the third system. This will take a couple of seconds again for it to just reach the required snaps and, and start the process and it will again ask you to select the, the IP address uh, in question and as soon as you select it uh, you will need to specify the passphrase that we saw on, in, on the other machine so I will just copy it and then I will do the same in the third one. And now, um, as you can see, um, uh, the systems are now available um, and we can see um, the two other machines uh, are now there. We can see the fingerprint and we can now allow them to join the cluster. I will just press the right um, arrow on my keyboard to select both of them and then continue with the process. Uh, the rest of it is fairly easy. It will, uh, MicroCloud in it will just continue to ask you a series of questions um, that basically will define uh, how you're going to be configuring and deploying your MicroCloud. So all you need to do is just follow the questions, provide the information required for the answers, and then you will be ready to go. So the first thing that I'm being asked here is if I would like to set up local storage, which yes, I would like to do. So I will just press enter and then it will show me all the available disks uh, that, um, that I could use for this. Now, MicroCloud supports both local and distributed storage. You can deploy one or the other or both. In my case, I want to, uh, to utilize both, which is why I made sure to have six specific disks um, that are available for MicroCloud, which means two for each systems, one for local, uh, one for distributed storage. 
Um, this uh, list you can um, select uh, specific disks by using space or right arrow key or you can also filter them by values. So as you can see we have some disks that have uh, 10 uh, gigabits of capacity and some that have 20 so I can easily just type 10 and it will filter out those that have only 10 and then I can select all of them with the right arrow. It will ask me whether I would like to wipe these disks, which we can do just to make sure that everything is fine with them. And then um, it will ask us if we want to set up distributed storage, which again, yes, I do want to do. As you can see, now we have um, only three disks available because the other three we have already utilized in the previous step. So they are already filtered out from the list. So now we can just uh, select the remaining ones and then press enter and then again we will wipe them for good measure and press enter. It will now ask us if we want to um, encrypt the selected disks. The default is no, but I would like to encrypt mine to make sure my microphone is secure, so I will say yes. It then asks us if we would like to set up CephFS remote storage. This can be useful because CephFS is a file system storage, so you can create file systems where several instances can access them at the same time, which might be useful if you want several of your instances to access a specific service. So we will say yes. And then it will um, also ask uh, if um, uh, we would like to specify um, a specific IP address for Ceph internal traffic and then in the next uh, one for Ceph external traffic or public traffic. Um, the reason why you might want to do this is if you want to uh, the, um, segregate the traffic for security reasons or potentially for performance reasons. So you can you can do that in order to optimize the performance of your microcloud. In this case, I'm just going to be selecting the default values. Finally, it will ask us if we want to configure distributed networking, which um, again, yes, we do want to do. And it will list available interfaces on in the systems. As you can see, each of the machines has one. So we will select them. And then it will ask us to specify both the IPv4 or IPv6 addresses if you want to use those, both are supported. Um, so I will here specify one of them. And then it will ask us to specify first and last um, address in the range. So I will do, for example, this. And then also specify the end, uh, the, the last address in the range as well. For example, this. And I will skip IPv6. And uh, I will also use the default DNS address, but you can specify that one as well. And finally, it will also ask you to configure potentially dedicated oven underlay networking, which again, you might want to do for performance reasons. If you want to understand a little bit better what this does, this is all outlined in our documentation, but I will proceed with the default here, which is no. And that was all. That is all you need to do in order to deploy your microcloud. Now, what is happening in the background is that microcloud is basically reaching out to all of these services. It is reaching out to LexD, which is the virtualization part. It is reaching out to Ceph, it is reaching out to Oven, it is initializing the services, it is um, kickstarting them, um, clustering them, and then connecting them all together. And for many other cloud platforms, these are some of the steps that you might need to do manually. In this case, we have automated that entire process, which then allows you to deploy your cloud um, really, really fast. So this typically takes um, a couple of minutes. Of course, it depends on the how powerful your hardware is and how fast your networks are. But in general, deploying a micro cloud takes a couple of minutes. Um, it takes a bit more minutes if the cloud is larger, but we have deployed micro clouds with 20. Um, physical systems and it took about six, seven minutes. So it doesn't take a long. As I mentioned, all of this is outlined in our documentation. So you can really, um, if you are interested, you can um, uh, read what each of these options mean and why you might want to select yes or no. But in general, um, it uh, will work best if you have at least three systems that give you high availability, if you choose distributed networking, which again gives you high availability and redundancy, and then distributed networking gives you flexibility in terms of what your instances can do and how you can configure a lot of um, different networking options. 
As you can see, um, Micro03 has joined the cluster, Micro02 has done the same, and now MicroCloud is just finalizing the process and putting everything together. And in a couple of seconds, we should have our cluster ready to go. I'm not pausing the video here just because uh, I'm doing this real time so you can see how long it actually takes. Uh, but as I mentioned, it's typically just a couple of minutes. And now you can see that MicroCloud is configuring cluster by devices, which is typically the last step in the process. And it should be finishing very soon. Maybe another useful um, information to mention while we are waiting uh, for this to be completed is that MicroCloud uh, is um, architecture agnostic, which means that you can deploy it on x86 or, or, R, or on ARM architectures, which means that you can really utilize it on a variety of devices, um, including some of the common ones that people might have at home, including Raspberry Pis or something like that, all the way to production grade servers. As you can see, now it says that the microcloud is ready, and now the only thing we will do is do microcloud status. And as you can see, um, the status is healthy. We have um, three cluster members, we have Microsoft units, microoven units, and everything is online. This was all for this specific um, uh, video because, as I said, we are trying to separate specific operations and this one focused only on deployment. If you're interested in uh, learning how you can access the UI for MicroCloud, then please watch the next video. Or if you're interested um, to see how you can uh, interact with MicroCloud and um, do other operations, you can see that in the following videos in this playlist.